Hey y'all, how you doing? So a while ago I put a poll up asking what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. And one of the biggest responses was to do time series analysis on real data using real code so that we can more easily apply it to our jobs and our research, whatever you're going to be working in. And that's exactly what I want to start doing in this video. So this video is going to throw it back to ACF and PACF, remember the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation functions, except we'll be looking at it from a code first, data first standpoint. Now that said, I do want you to have a good theoretical understanding of these two things. So please go watch uh, my video on these concepts from before or whatever source that helps you understand these because that's going to make our understanding of the data that much deeper. So we'll be looking at two different pieces of data in this video. The first one is ice cream production data in the United States. So um, how much ice cream was produced in the United States for many years. And the second one we'll be looking at is stock price data, which is something that a lot of people try to predict in time series forecasting in hopes of making money, buying and selling at the correct prices. As we'll see, it's not super easy, but I'll show you how to get started doing it and how to look at the ACF and PACF in both of these cases. So let's get started looking at our ice cream production data. And by the way, this notebook and all the code and all of the uh, files I'll be using is going to be available on my GitHub and linked in each video, so no need to worry about that. So first I read the data in, that's what this line here does, df ice cream, which is data frame, is equal to pd.readcsv. pd is short for pandas, which is a very popular data analysis library in Python. So I read in this CSV, which contains my data, and I see what it looks like right off the bat. We see that it's simple two columns. Uh, each row corresponds to a month starting in January 1972. And the second column is something that relates to ice cream production in the United States. So the higher the number is, the more ice cream was produced. So as we can see, this data set is not exactly friendly in terms of the name and type of the column. So let's do a little bit of cleaning so our life is easier going forward. The first thing we'll do is rename the columns to date and production instead of whatever this code is here. The next thing we'll do here in this line is set the date column as a date time rather than a string. So Python can understand it as a date going forward. The next thing we'll do is set that date column as our index so that plotting is a lot easier. And then we're going to subset the data. As we saw, it starts in 1972, but this video is more about PACF and ACF, so I don't want the volume of data to get in the way. So we'll be subsetting it to start in January of 2010, and it ends in 2020. So we're looking at a 10-year span, and each year we have 12 observations, one per month. So that's what we'll do, and look at the final data set. We see it starts in 2010 January, and it goes forward. So. When you do df.head, you just get the first five rows just to get an idea of what it looks like, but it continues till 2020. So one of the natural first things we want to do is plot the data, see what the time series looks like, see what we're dealing with going forward to best understand the tools we might use. Plotting is pretty easy in Python. The key line you want to look at here is plt.plot, and you put in the name of the series. So I want to take my data frame and plot the production column of it, which is, again, this column here, which measures how much production there is per month in the United States of ice cream. And a couple other lines just for some other things like these uh, gray bars which separate the years, and we end up with this plot. So we see on the x-axis is time, y-axis is production, and we see that we have how much ice cream is produced every single month. Now before going forward, does this kind of line up with our understanding? Well, it's ice cream, right? So there should be highest production in the summers when it's hot. That's exactly what we see. So the highest is the peak right here, which is in the middle of each pair of gray bars, which is exactly the summer. So here's June and July. And as the year closes out, we get to December and the beginning of the year in January, February, it's low, of course. So this does seem to match up with the ice cream production over time. There's that strong seasonal component, of course, because we see that it's about the same pattern every single year. Some little things we might look at in the future are what happened in 2015? Why is it suddenly much lower than it was before and after? So these are all things you might want to think about. Now let's get to the main event of this video is how do I plot the ACF autocorrelation function and PACF partial autocorrelation function. Turns out it could not be easier. You just need to import these two things. So from statsmodels.graphics.tsa plots, TSA stands for time series analysis, you import plot ACF and plot PACF. So these two things will allow us to give one liners for creating the ACF. So we do ACF plot is equal to plot ACF, you put in the series, which is uh, data frame ice cream dot production, and you can optionally specify how many lags. If you don't specify it, it just chooses something for you. I put in 100 lags because I want you to see the long-term effect in the ACF. 
Now this is what the ACF looks like. We see that there's some kind of cycle over time. We see that it's high and then low and then high and then low and that kind of just carries on over time. But in the long run, we see that it's going to zero. So these blue bars, remember, are the error bands. Anything within the blue bars is not statistically significant. And we see that around maybe lag 30, the things are all within the blue bars, so it's not statistically significant. And anyways, it's going to zero. So here's where your theoretical understanding of ACF and PACF come in, because anybody can generate this plot, but only if you've uh, studied what this plot means can you truly extract any good insights from it. So remember what we know about an AR model, an autoregressive model. For an autoregressive model, we would expect the ACF, the autocorrelation function, to exhibit a diminishing behavior over time. That's exactly what we see here. So that's why the comment I put underneath this is, based on decaying ACF, we are likely dealing with an autoregressive process. Because for a moving average process, we would get a different signature. We would get a few strong lags, and then it would just shut off. Here we get more like this decaying pattern over time. So we're probably dealing with an autoregressive process, but let's plot the PACF for further evidence. Plotting the PACF is pretty much the same. We just use the plot PACF function instead, the same data series here. When we create that plot, we get this. So it looks like there's strong lags at one. This is the first one's at zero. We don't think about that one because that's just the time series with itself, which is obviously going to be one. So we see strong lags at one, at two, at three, and then it sort of starts shutting off, not super strong stuff. We see strong stuff again around maybe 10, maybe 13, something further on. Based on what I'm seeing here, what I might say is we should start with an autoregressive model with lags one, two, three, maybe 10, because that's also strong, maybe 13. Maybe we would even include this one because it's pretty strong in the negative direction, but at least these couple. So this kind of gives us a good idea about where to start with our time series analysis. Now, of course, we should do further tests. We should use better time series tools to help us figure out and pin down exactly the order of the AR, exactly the order of the MA if we're using such a component. But we see that just simply plotting the series, plotting the ACF and plotting the PACF, we already have a decent starting point about what kind of model we should use. And then we can start with that model, build on it, maybe eliminate some stuff and see what the final model should be. But remember, the tools that we're calling ACF and PACF are not to get us our final answer. It's to help us get to a starting point, help us start understanding the time series that we're dealing with so that we can build on that in the future. So here's how you write the code to get the plots of PACF and ACF. Now, the last thing we'll look at is on stock data. So I just made a video on how do you get stock data, so I won't go over that again but we're gonna be getting the time series of the S&P 500, which is a measure of how well the economy is doing on average. It kind of aggregates 500 diverse companies from across the economy. So uh, the ticker symbol is SPY. We gather the data in this way. I'm not gonna go over this code again, but we get this data, which is basically every single day, we get the date and we get the closing price of the stock in dollars. So here's the first couple lines. And by the way, I asked for starting 2015, ending in 2020, so about five years of data. We can again plot the S&P 500. So we see starting in 2015, we have this entire time series. And the gray bars, as with the previous chart, are separating years. Now, one of the things we see right away is that this is not stationary, right? There is definitely an upwards trend over time as the economy got better from 2015 to 2020, um, but it's definitely not stationary, which would be that it's centered around some number, the volatility is not changing over time and there's no seasonal component. So maybe the first thing we wanna do is actually take the first difference, which means instead of plotting this series, we plot the series, which is the stock price on one day minus the stock price on the previous day, because that's more likely to be stationary. So if I do that, and that's just a couple lines of code, I take first difference is the stock price tomorrow minus the stock price today. So I subtract corresponding stock prices. And then I set the first difference as a column in my data set. So now it looks like this, the closing price, but also the first difference between consecutive days. If I plot that instead, then I get something that looks a little bit more stationary. So at least now it seems to be centered around zero rather than growing over time. The volatility is kind of up in the air. There's definitely periods of higher volatility than others. And doesn't look like there's a strong seasonal component, at least from what I can see. Of course, these are all things that we can more robustly test for, but this I'm more comfortable with creating ACF and PACF than this clearly non-stationary series. So that's one data transformation you can do right off the bat. Creating the ACF and PACF the exact same way as with the ice cream data, we see something not very helpful at all. Of course, the zeroth lag is going to be 100% here, but 
Nothing else really stands out all that much. Maybe this guy, but seems like no strong evidence here. Let's see if PACF can help. Looks pretty much the same. Again, no real strong evidence here. And I wanted to include this example because it kind of starts showing you why stock prices are so difficult to predict. Of course, we haven't done any of the complex analysis yet, but looking at just ACF and PACF for where we might start, we're already kind of stuck. It doesn't look like there's any lags that are particularly standing out. There looks like maybe a few here and there, but nothing that's very high that's going to help us for sure predict this time series. And that's one of the hardest parts of stock price prediction is that if this was a lot easier and we saw clear lags in the ACF and PACF, I don't think stock price prediction would be as hard as it actually is. But of course, this was for the S&P 500. You can put any ticker symbol in here. For example, I'm just doing this on the fly. What if we put in Microsoft instead and run all of this analysis all over again? So if I put in Microsoft and create all my plots, let's look from the beginning. Here's the Microsoft stock price over time. Here is the first difference. Again, looks somewhat stationary. The autocorrelation, we see some stronger lags here actually at one, two, and then at three, four, five, six, seven, eight maybe. So we see maybe there's a little bit more predictive power that we can apply here. In the PACF, again, we have some pretty strong lags over here. So it really depends on the stock you're trying to predict. It depends on the time period you're trying to predict. Maybe sometimes there's periods of time that are easier to predict than others, but in general, stock price prediction is not an easy, easy problem. But the point of this video, I wanted to show you how to plot the PACF how to plot the ACF and how to plot the actual series. So next time we'll look at the moving average and autoregressive models. So until next time.